Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I'd like to talk about parent radical function. We've talked about parent functions before. Specifically, we've talked about the parent function for the quadratic functions. y equals x squared, for example, was a parent function for the quadratic functions. And this was, of course, a parabola. So, if I were to draw this parent function for the quadratic function, let's just say, let's label some of this. This is 2, 4, 6, this is negative 2, negative 4. And if I was to draw this parent function for this radical function, x is 1, y is 1, x is 2, y is 4, when x was 3, y is 6, 7, 8, 9, like this. And we kind of had drawn, drawn this uh, quadratic function like this. So y equals x squared was the parent function for the quadratic uh, functions. Well, now, what that means is, the word parent function means that if you understand this parent function, you understand a great deal about quadratic functions in general. This is, of course, a parabola, and it's a parent function for the quadratic function. So this is a quadratic function, parent function. Now, if you know this, for example, you get an idea what y equals negative x squared would be like. So that would be like the mirror image, for example, of this function like this, right? And if you know what this parent function was like, you could say y equals x squared plus 3. You should know what that would be like because that would be this parent function and the whole thing would be moved up like this, okay? This is, of course, an approximation of what, what really go, is going on here, but you get the idea, right? So the concept of the parent function is that if you understand the parent function, you can manipulate these functions, you can uh, get a good feel for how these functions behave. So it's very important to understand these parent functions. So we had suggested that y equals x squared is a parent function for quadratics. So this is a quadratic function. And then we have talked about before a great deal about quadratic functions. And we suggest that you can write quadratic functions in three different ways. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now this was the standard form of quadratics. This was the standard form of a quadratic function. And then we had talked about this one, f of x, is equal to a times the quantity x minus vx squared plus vy. This was the vertex form of quadratic functions. And finally, we had this one, f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus s1 times the quantity x minus s2. And this was the x-intercept form. So these, so these three here represent the three different ways of writing quadratic functions. Now you kind of have to know this and you, if you don't know this it's worth the time to uh, to try to master it, to review this. In the standard for form for example if you had to graph this you have to do it by vx equals opposite of b over 2a etc. In this case if you recall the vx and vy represented the vertex of the parabola right? So if you don't know this, you must master this, like super must, double must, you must master this before you go on, because all of Algebra 2 and the rest of Algebra 1 here is going to be based, not all of it, of course, I'm not exaggerating, a good part of al advanced algebra is based on these functions. Uh, among these functions, this was the parent function for the quadratic function. And of these three forms, this one, the vertex form, is very important for us because we'll see this one recurring again and again. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to review this vertex form of the quadratic function, which is the parabolas, before we go on to develop our concept of the parent radical function, which are square root function. This is going to be the parent radical function, c y equals square root of x, like that. Okay? So... For the quadratics again, for the quadratic function, f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus vx squared plus vy. This is the vertex form. This is the vertex form of the quadratic function. Now in this form, 
the vertex was the Vx and Vy, right? And uh, the A term over here was very important because that determined whether the graph is going to be a U or an N. So if I give you a graph, uh, if I give you a function like this, Y equals uh, negative 2 times X minus 3 squared plus 2, now the first thing you have to do is you have to recognize that this is in the vertex form. This is a quadratic function in the vertex form. And the vertex, in fact, is 3 and 2. It's not negative 3 because of this negative over here. The vertex of this parabola is 3 and 2. So you go to 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. That's where the vertex be. And if, I, if you recall, I said, well, once you find the vertex, do yourself a favor. Draw this axis of symmetry. Right, because that's going to help you graph this parabola. So you're going to graph this uh, axis of symmetry. So this is the vertex 3 and 2 like this. Okay, that's the vertex. And then you realize that this parabola is going to be upside down parabola. It's because of that's negative. If A is positive, it's going to be a U. And if A is negative, it's going to be like an N. So we know this parabola is kind of going to look like this. Okay, because it's negative 2. Now all you need, and then again, is just another point because this is symmetrical graph. So you need a point here, a point here on this side to complete the graph. So all you got to do is find some points. Well, that's reasonably easy to do because, you know, you can plug a point. See, this is 4. So what is the y value when x is 4? Let's do that. So negative 2 times 4 minus 3 squared plus 2. Negative 2 times 4 minus 3 is 1 squared plus 2. So, and negative 2, this is 1 squared is just 1, times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 2, and that's 0. So, in fact, it's right here. And then this is going to be symmetrical mirror image. It's going to be like this. So, now we have, now if you can do more points, you know, get an idea like this. But, you know, if you want to do, you can put in like, this is 4, right? So, you can do 5 or something like that. And then you get another point like this. Approximately, this would be this function over here. Y is equal to negative 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 2. Now, you should be able to do this comfortably, okay? If you don't know this, uh, if you don't know how to do this, first thing you do is write this on a piece of paper like 100 times, all right? And then do this question like 200 times or something like that until you know exactly what you're doing you got to put the vertex there you have to make, and don't do like silly things it's like don't make mistakes saying okay the vertex is like negative 3 2 no it's not negative 3 2 because that negative doesn't belong to the vx it's 3 2 so don't be making some silly mistakes like that so find the vertex put the axis of symmetry that's the axis of symmetry and then just generate an another point or two or three or four point, however many your heart desires to graph this thing. So you should be able to be reasonably comfortable with this. Okay? Now, not to like belabor the point, okay, but it is that important. So this is f of x equals a times the quantity x minus vx squared plus vy. This is the general equation for a quadratic function. This is a general equation of a quadratic function. The parent quadratic function is equal to y equals x squared. So this is the parent quadratic. Now, this is the general quadratic equation in the vertex form. Got it? Parent. Because if you understand this, you can manipulate the graph, see? So that's important. You'll see why. Now, Alan. now, we're going to learn about the parent radical function. The term radical refers to the square root sign, of course. So the parent radical function is f of x is equal to square root of x. Okay. Now, if you're getting scared about this f of x business, it's not that bad, all right? Let's do this, okay? Now, f of x is another way of saying y, right? y is equal to square root of x. But it's a very useful way of saying y. Because y is a function of x, meaning y depends on it. What's the value of y when x is this? What's the value of y when x is this? What y is depends on what x is. y is a function of x. That's what that means. y is a function of x. 
So that's very useful because th then you can you can use different symbols to discriminate between different functions. So I could be talking about f of x is equal to square root of x, and I could be saying g of x is going to be equal to negative 3 times square root of x minus 1 plus 4, and then k of x is going to be equal to 1 half the square root of x plus 2 plus 16 or something like that. Now you can talk about different functions with different names, and there's no confusion between them. So don't be intimidated with this f of x terminology. It's just another way of writing y. It's a very convenient and useful and a cool way of writing y. Now what we have to do, try to figure out is what does the graph of f of x equals square root of x looks like, okay? Now you know what this looks like. That's a parabola. We've just been talking about it for the last 10 minutes or so. But that's a parabola. But what does this graph look like? You want to know what that graph looks like? I'm going to tell you what this. Well, we're going to discover it together. So what does this graph look like, okay? The first thing is, okay, well, if you don't know, let's make a table. Let's make a table. All right, let's make a table. Here's a table. So I'm going to put x over here, and I'm going to put f of x over here, and that's the same thing as y. Okay, we're just going to do it like that. I'm going to pick a bunch of numbers over here. Okay, so I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to put. I'm going to make myself. I'm going to negative nine. I'm going to pick negative four. I'm going to pick negative one. I'm going to pick zero. I'm going to pick one. And why am I picking this? Because I just am. Okay, just do it. So now, and then we're going to see what the values of f of x is going to be at each point. Okay, so what is f of negative 9? That means, what's the value of the function when x is negative 9? Then what you do is you substitute this negative 9 in place of x over there, okay? So f of negative 9 is going to be equal to square root of, well, it's going to be negative 9. And then you completely flip this as you guys told this is This is awful. You know why it's awful, right? Because, you know, you can't take the square root of a negative number. This is, this is like haram. It's not even haram in like, in, in blue, sky blue. It's, it's like haram in like red. Okay, like, like super haram, okay? You can't take a square root of a negative number that's not defined. You can't take the square root of a negative number that, that's not allowed, okay? So, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So, this is not defined. Not not defined okay that means there's no value for this function over here it's like what is f of negative it's not defined okay fine the case okay, so it's undefined let's just write undefined how about f of negative four well let's do that one again f of negative four is square root of negative four again it's not defined that's like haram again we're like in haram territory over here how about f of negative one again you can't take the square root of a negative number that's not defined either. Ah. So basically, you can't take any negative x's, right? So anything over here is like haram ter territory, right? So this function does not exist in the negative territory. In other words, this is empty. There's nothing there. You can't, you, you can't even talk about it. It's like f of negative. No, don't, don't think about f of negative. No, no, no. It's haram. Don't go there. You, f of, this function is not defined. My dear students, it's not defined over here. It doesn't exist. This is like haram, so it does not exist. Okay, that means all of the function is it's going to be here, okay? Okay, let's see. So this is not defined, this is not defined, this is... Okay, what of f of 0? Well, that, that means, let's see, f of 0. What's the square root of 0? Well, square root of 0 is not... Oh, it is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. That's the mind check, okay? So that's the first value that we got. Oh, cool. So f of 0 is 0. Okay, now let's do some more. How about f of 1? What's the value of the function when x is 1? Well, square root of 1. I put 1 over here. So you know, square root of 1 is 1, last time I checked. So how about f of 4? Well, what's the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is 2. Okay, got that one. Now what's f of 9? f of 9 is square root of 9. The square of 9 is 3. Last time I checked, okay, 3. Ta-da, we have something to work with over here, don't we? Okay, so now let's, let's label some of this. This is 2, that's 4, 6, 8. Okay, now when you, I should try to set a better example for you guys. So label your axes, full cards. Okay, so just label your axes like this. Okay, be good boys and girls, gonna label your axes like that. So f of 0 is 0. Okay, f of 1 is 1. So when x is 1, y is 
1. Then we go to 4. F of 4 is 2 right there. And then 9, which is over here, it is 3. Alright, so now I'm going to connect the dots. Ta-da! It looks like this. Okay, so the this is the graph of this function here. F of x is equal to square root of x. Now look, now look, very important. Mucho, mucho important. Okay? This is the parent function. This is the parent radical function. You gotta know this. It just so happens, see, this is radical, right? It just so happens the radical function kind of looks like a radical sign, doesn't it? I don't know, to me it does. So it's kind of cool, it's easy to remember. What does a radical function look like? Oh, it looks like this. Except there's no hook like that. It looks like that. Okay? It looks like that. So, first thing you got to know is you got to know what, what parent functions look like. If I, y equals x squared, what does that look like? Um, I think it's like a line. No, it's not a line. It's a parabola. Okay? And then, what does this look like? Y equals square root of x. Oh, I think, isn't that a parabola? No, it's not a parabola. It's not, it's not a line either. It's a radical function. It looks like this. Okay? Look, this is what we have thus far discovered. So, f of x is equal to square root of x. That's the parent function for the radical functions. And the graph of the parent function for radical function looks like a radical symbol like this. And we realize very importantly that, that this part of the graph does not exist. There's nothing on that side, okay? There's nothing on that side because you can't take the square root of a negative number. Now, this concept, the way you express that really is that, see, the domain of this function, see, when we talk about domain, domain and range, input, output, x, y, when we talk about domain, this is like all possible, P-O-S-S-I, possible x values, okay, of all possible inputs, right? So we said, what are all possible inputs here? Well, it has to be positive numbers, right? Okay, positive numbers, right? Another way of saying that is the domain of this function, the domain of this function, which is all possible x values, domain of this function is x has to be greater than or equal to zero. It could be zero, right? So this is very important. The domain of this function is restricted. Unlike a parabola, unlike a line where the domain is all real numbers. See, for the, for the parabola, the domain is all real numbers. For a line, domain is all real. There's no restrictions for those functions in their domain. But there is for a radical function. They're radical, all right? So the domain is restricted. So the domain is x is greater than 4. Now you have to understand this. Now when we, this is, I just want to tell you, this is on the side, okay? Another way of saying all positive numbers, all positive numbers, another way of saying that is x is greater than or equal to 0. That's just good to know. Sometimes because they, they test you ACT, SAT, they say all positive numbers, but and then in a subtle way they're saying x is greater than or equal to 0 or something like that. So, by the way, does the 0 itself does not have a sign, right? 0 is a sign neutral number. The domain of this function is restricted, so it has to be greater than or equal to zero. How about the range of this function? When we talk about range, domain range, which is the output value of the y values, the the function looks like this, right? Kind of. So the domain is all of this. The range with all possible values over here. There's no y over here. This part of the y-axis is not used. So the range of this function was also similarly restricted. Y had to be greater than or equal to zero. Do you understand? Very important. So let me do this again. So the parent radical function y equals uh, uh, or f of x equals the square root of x. Okay, and it looks like a radical sign. You have to know this. Like if I ask you, what does the you know, parent radical function look like? Don't ever say parabola. Say it looks like a radical some sign. It looks like that. And then we say the domain, you have to know this, the domain is restricted. X is greater than or equal to zero. And the range value, which is all the possible Y values, is similarly restricted. Y is greater than or equal to zero. It's all over here. Does that make sense? Now look, so let's draw this. Uh, let's, let's try to do this a little neatly. So this is two, this is four, six, and eight. Let's be good boys. This is a two. I'm trying to set a good example for you guys. Six, eight. And negative 2, negative 4, label your axes, negative 6, a few, little tiny bit. I go by 2's over here because it looks neater, otherwise it's a little crowded there, right? 
So, okay, now let's see. When x is 1, this is... I'm just going to draw the parent function here. When x was... I picked 4, see? Because the square root of 4 is 2. And I picked 9 because square root of 9 is nice, neat number 3. Because if I pick any number in between this, it's a mess, okay? So, uh, it, it just pays to know a little bit of that. A little bit of foresight, you know what I'm saying? So, this is the function y is equal to square root of x, okay? Now... Let me ask you this. If this is y equals square root of x, what does this look like? y is equal to negative square root of x. What do you think this function is going to look like? Hmm? Well, if you were comfortable with manipulating the quadratic functions, which I believe it, you are probably, this is just a reflection or a mirror image of this function over here. That's going to look like, like this. It's going to look like this, a mirror image. Add a mirror at the image, okay, right here. Okay, this is y equals negative square root of x, like this, right? Because before, if you said y equals x squared and y equals negative x, well, these are mirror images, right? It was a flip. Okay. That's why parent equation is important. No. Now, how about this one? I'll give you another one. Ready? Are you super ready? Okay, how about, now if this is the parent function right here, what does this look like? y is equal to? 3 square root of x. What, how does this compare to the parent function? Well, simple as that. Let me ask you this. Would you rather be paid y equals 3 square root of x or would you rather be paid y equals square root of x? If you wanted to make money, that is, and you can give some to charity and stuff like that. Of course, you want to be paid more because it's like 3 times as much pay, right? So it's going to be like multiply. Whatever this function is going to be multiplied by 3. So 1 becomes like 3 over here and 2 becomes like um, where is it? 6 over here. Over here. And 3 becomes like 9 over here. See? It's like this. So it goes up faster. Correct? So it goes up faster. That's approximately y equals 3 squared of x. And then, similarly, if I had given you y equals 1 half of square root of x, it's going to go up slower. You, you wouldn't want to be paid this, right? So it's going to go like half as much. Like It's going to be kind of like no, try. Okay, you get the idea, right? It's gonna be like this. Gonna be like this. Gonna be like this. One half squared of x. Does that make sense? So, if you know the parent equation, you should be able to understand. If that's the parent equation, you should, in your mind's eye, you should know what this looks like, and in your mind's eye, you should know what this looks like. It's gonna be chubbier. It's gonna be going up faster, and you should know what this looks like. Okay, it's going to go up slower, right? And in that way, you can have like, you know, like this. Y is equal to negative 3 square root of x. Well, it's going to be flipped for one thing because it's negative. It's going to be upside down and it's going to be going down faster. So it's going to be like this, right? Okay, so that's very important. Now, one more thing. There's one more function that we have to talk about before we go on. And that is this. If that's the parent function... Okay, if that's the parent function, the yellow one over here, what does this look like? Y is equal to square root of x uh, plus 3. What do you think that one looks like? Uh, this one is going to be the parent function. The whole function moved up by 3. So when, when x is 0, it's going to be plus 0 over here. It's going to be up by 3. 1, 2, 3 over here. And this one is going to become 4 over here. Everything is going to be moved up by 3. Like this. See? The same function just shifted up by that. It, you know, you could just take that one and just put it on top of each other. It's moved over. So this is y is equal to square root of x plus 3. Okay. So this is called a vertical shift, see? Up and down shift, that's called a vertical shift. So if you move a graph, like, just like, you know, if you like a chess piece, you up and down, okay? Up and down, that's called a vertical shift. If you move a graph, like, sideways, okay, what's that called? What's that? Called? Of course, it's called a horizontal shift, right? If you move a graph like this, that's called a horizontal shift. If you move a graph like up and down like this, that's called a vertical shift. So this is a vertical shift of the parent function. Does that make sense? Okay, so what have we learned so far? Let's talk about it. We have learned the following. We learn that this is the parent equation for the radical function. And we learn that the domain and the range of the parent function is restricted. 
And from there, we extrapolated a little bit and we appreciated if that's the parent function, we know how this looks like. This is a mirror image of the parent function. We also know that this is like a chubbier version of the parent function. And this is like the skinnier version of the parent function. And we also learned that this is a vertical shift of the parent function to move the whole graph up, the graph up by three units like that. Okay? Now from this, from this, the next step is, and the next step is, okay, to give you the general formula, the general formula for all radical functions, for all radical functions, okay. So I'm going to write that over here, right? So f of x is going to equal to a times the square root of x minus vx plus vy. Okay. Now, that should look familiar to you. See, f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus vx squared plus vy. This was the quadratic function, quadratic function in the vertex form. So that was a quadratic function. So this was a quadratic function in the vertex form, right? And what we just wrote here is the, the general equation for radical functions in general. This is a this is how all radical functions will be. You can be written as this form. And you have to appreciate. You have to appreciate that they're very similar. Look, look. f of x is equal to a times x minus vx, okay, plus vy. The only difference between the two is whether I have a parenthesis and a square over here or if I have a square root sign over here. Do you understand? And that's very intuitive. The only difference between these two graphs is whether or not there's a square over here or a radical sign. This is the defining feature of a quadratic function. And this is the defining feature of a radical function. And that's really the only difference between the two uh, in the appearance on how they look. Okay. Now, a radical function does not have a vertex like a parabola does. But we call this point, the beginning point, the pseudo vertex. Pseudo means like false or fake. P-S-E-U-D-O. That's my terminology. That's my terminology, affectionate. So, so that's called the pseudo vertex, okay, or the so false vertex, so to speak, because uh, it, that's not really the technical term for it. But it really helps because if you keep that concept in, in, in mind, and the functions are very similar in the way they look. Now, we're going to talk about this next time, okay? But if I gave you something like this, f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 4, you should recognize this. You should recognize this is a radical function right here in this form. And for radical functions, we're going to only need to know one form. Like, not like quadratic, we need three forms, right? For here, we only want one form, so it's not so bad. So then you have to recognize what's the pseudo vertex. The pseudo vertex here, we're going to put it in quotations so we don't be talking about pseudo vertex. It's going to be what? It's going to be 2 and 4. So instead of starting here, it's going to start at 2 and 4 over there. Correct? So this is going to be moved. So it's going to, instead of starting over here, origin here, it's going to be moved. So that's the pseudo vertex. And then you recognize this is positive. So it's still going to go up like this. And you recognize it's going to go up faster. It's going to be like, you know, like the graph that went up faster compared to the parent function like this. So that's how it's going to look. So this is going to be the graph of f of x equals 3 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 4. And it's going to be that easy if you understand it. You follow? But this, inshallah, we'll talk about next time. We're going to talk about, elaborate more on the general equation of radical functions. Today, I just wanted to introduce you to the parent radical function, which is f of x is equal to square root of x, and some of the salient features of this function. I hope you appreciate it. Until next time, assalamu alaikum.